Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can make this fascinating looking oscillating waves. This piece is my attempt to recreate a work by Dave White from Bees and Bombs, and he has done lots and lots of beautiful looping animations using code. So I will link his blog below, so please check it out. In this tutorial, we will be using object-oriented programming. To create an oscillating motion, we need a total of four main arguments. So the x and the y location, and then the radius or the amplitude and the angle. So I'm going to declare those variables first. But instead of just declaring a variable, I'm going to declare an array because we want a position for all of the pieces along the wave, right? So let x equals to an array, an empty array. Same thing for y. And then I'm going to have one for amplitude. And let's set the amplitude to 50. And we want the angle also. Let's set that to zero. And then two more that we need. One is the number of the squares that we want in the wave. So I'm going to create a variable called num. I'm not going to set it to anything yet because I'm going to create another variable called size and num will be depending on the size. So let's set the size to be 40. And then in the setup function, we're going to calculate the value for the num variable. So it's going to be num equals to width. Actually, it's going to be height, right? Because we want the wave to be vertical, height divided by size. And then now we want to populate the x and y arrays here. So we can do that by using a for loop. And we're going to do it actually in the draw loop because our wave is going to be moving. So for let i equals to 0, i less than num, i plus plus. So x of i will be equals to amplitude times cosine of angle. And then y will be equals to i times size, right? Basically, this is just calculating where with the position of each of the square will be vertically. And then now we're going to draw a rectangle or a square in this case. Rect is a function that takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y location of top left corner of that rectangle. And then the third and the fourth are going to be the size. So for the first two, we're going to put in x of i and y of i. And then the last two will be size, right? Then let's just try this. And the reason that we have all of these squares in a straight line, that is because right now angle is set to zero and amplitude times cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, right? Times amplitude, which is 50. So that's why it's here. So let's say I change it to 100, then it will be slightly shifted. But that's not what we want. We want the angle to change. So we need to calculate the angle. So angle equals to, what should it be? The equation that we're going to use is going to be i divided by num times 360. And that is because when i equals to 0, so at this square here, we want the angle to be 0, which is at 100, right? But then when i equals to num, right, which is whatever the number is, in this case, it's 10, then this becomes 1, and then we times this times 360, then we'll get 1 as well. So it create one period of this wave. Because we're going to be using degrees as our input, we need to not forget to set the angle mode to degrees. Then let's try this. So as you can see, at i equals to 0, angle equals to 0. And then at i equals to num, angle also equals to 360, which gives the x location equals to 100, right? Or the amplitude. And then it creates this wave that we want. And now what we need to do is that we also want to shift it horizontally, right? So we need to use the translate function. And we want to translate it. Let's, let's just give it width divided by 2. So we want it to be in the middle here. Right, so the middle is here, and then this is middle plus 100 or amplitude. So let me also just draw a line, an equilibrium line, so you can see where the equilibrium point is. So 0, 0, and 0, height. All right, so now we have a set of 10 squares that start at 100 and then ends at 100. And this is at a period of 1, right? So 
from peak to peak. I'm gonna create two more variables. The first one is period. So right now period equals to one, right? Because it goes from angle equals to zero to angle equals to 360. So what if we times this by period, right? And we change period to two. All right, I'm gonna change the size down also. So now it's two period, right? This is one period here, and then this is another period. And that is because at i equals to num, actually it should be num minus one, because i never equals to num, right? It's num minus one. So when i equals to num minus one, then angle equals to 360 times the number of period, in this case is two. And then the last piece that I want to introduce is called shift. And what does shift do? Let's set it to zero first. So right now, as you can see, we start at cosine of angle and angle equals to zero. That's why we get the value of the amplitude, right? Because cosine of zero equals to one and then one times amplitude equals to amplitude. But let's say that we add shift here. Right now, because shift is zero, it doesn't do anything. What if we shift it by 90? Can you see that? From zero, and then 90. It got shifted up, right? So now we actually get the sine function here. So as you can see, the sine and cosine functions are just a shifting variation of each other. So the reason that we want to introduce the shift variable here is because we want to be able to start the wave at different locations. And then the last piece before we start creating a class, we also want to be able to move the wave. And we can actually just do that by incrementing this shift variable here. So shift, what if we increment it by just one? All right, so now we have a moving wave. Now let's put this inside a class. To do that, you just have to create a new file. And I'm actually going to create two files right now because we're going to be creating two classes. The first one, we're going to call it wave.js. And then I'm going to call another one pack. So it's a pack of waves. And then before we start writing a class, let's go to index.html file here. And underneath this line, copy this two times and then change the name to the name of the new JavaScript file that you just created. So I have wave.js and then I have pack.js. And this is a way for us to tell the computer or the program that, hey, we have created a new JavaScript file. Please integrate it into the program. All right, so now we can go back to wave.js. So we're going to start with writing a class and we're gonna name it wave. And then inside the constructor function, what do we need? So basically we want to create the wave that we just did in the sketch function, right? So we need an X array, we need a Y array, then we need the num, right? And num equals to width divided by size. And we also need a size here. We're gonna keep size to 10. Then we also need an amplitude, and then we're gonna set, I'm gonna set an amplitude to 30 this time. And then we also need angle, right? And then let's start that at zero. What else do we need? We also need shift and we need period, right? And I'm gonna set these actually, actually I'm gonna set period at 1.5 and shift, I'm going to set it as a parameter here. All right, and now we can start writing the display function. Okay, so we need a for loop, right? Before we populate the x and y arrays, we need to calculate the angle. So I'm essentially doing the same thing that I just did in sketch, but Let's just do it again so that we know exactly what we're doing. So this dot angle equals to i divided by this dot num minus one times 360, right? And then times period. And then now we can 
populate the x and y array. And we're going to use the equation amplitude, this dot amplitude, times cosine of this dot angle, right? And then we need to add it by shift, right? And then in terms of the y location, it's just i times size. All right, and then the last piece that we need to not forget is to increment the shift variable so that we get a moving wave. So let's just start with this and come here to sketch, and then we can delete all of this. And as you can see, I didn't put the translate function within the wave class, and that's because I want to translate each of the wave inside the pack class, and I'll show you. All right, so first we're going to create a variable called w. We don't need this either. And w is going to be a new wave object. And what do we need in here? We just need one argument, which is the shift, right? So let's just do no shift for now. So let's put in zero. And then we just want to display it. Okay, nothing is displaying. Oh, silly me. Nothing is displaying because I didn't draw the rectangle. So we need this dot x of i, this dot y of i, and this dot size, right? There you go. So we get one wave that starts here. Don't worry that it's here. We'll translate it in another class. But what I want to change here a little bit here first is I want to add color and I'm going to set it as an argument here as a parameter and then in display fill will be at this color and I also don't want stroke oh then we have to come here and add what the color that I want so let's do let's just start with black all right so next, we're going to create a set of waves or a pack of waves, essentially, in this new class called pack. So let's start with class and then I'm going to name it pack. And then within the constructor function, like I just said, we want to create a set of waves, right? So I'm going to create an array called waves. And then the next variable that we want is going to be called numWave. And this is going to be set as a parameter and this is like the name suggested, the number of waves that we want in each of the set or the pack here. And then we're going to use a for loop that goes through i equals to 0 to i less than number of wave. And we're going to populate this waves array with a new wave object. And inside the wave object, we need two things, right? We need the shift and we need the color. So in order for us to pass in arguments inside the wave object here for shift and color, we also need that as the parameter for this class. So shift and color. And then we're going to set these as the new variables. So it's going to be shift equals to shift and color equals to color. Then we need to change this to this dot and then this dot. And then now we can write another display method within the pack class. And this method is basically going to call the display method within the wave class. So we're going to use a for loop to go through the wave objects that we have created inside this waves array. So this dot waves of i, and then we're going to call the display method inside the wave class, right? Actually, I'm going to use a different name so that you're not confused. So let's do this as display wave. So display wave is a method to display one wave inside the wave class. And then now we go back to the pack class. So we have a display method within the pack class that is going to call the display wave method within the wave class, right? 
on each of the wave objects that we just created here. Okay, so once we have this, we can go back to sketch. So now instead of creating a wave object, we want to create a pack object, right? So let's create a new variable. So let's call it waves. And we don't want this anymore. So waves equals to new pack object, right? And in the pack object, what do we need? We need number of wave, shift, and color. So let's do how about eight? And then let's do no shift again, and then color. Let's do black. And then we're going to display it. OK. So new wave is not defined, so this has to be this dot. Oh, num wave too. Why do we only see one? What did we forget? We forget to translate. And what is the horizontal position that we want to translate? So we are going to create a new variable. Let's do it horizontal position here. And we're going to translate it evenly based on the number of waves that we have. So we can use the equation i divided by this dot num wave minus 1, right? And then we're going to time it by the width. So Let's try this. We're going to translate by that much. Whoa, this is not even. And that is because we forgot to put in two very important functions when we do transformation, which is push and pop. All right. And what does push and pop do? Basically, push saves the new transformation. So we have the translate function here, right? And then pop returns it back to the original state. So we will use push and pop here inside the for loop such that in each of the wave that we draw here, before we draw the next one, we want to reset it back to the original state and then we translate to the new position. And now all we have to do is that we need to create more of these pack of waves. So let's go back to sketch and I'm going to declare more of these waves. So Let's do waves one, maybe not the best name, but it's okay. Waves two and waves three. I want to create three sets of waves and each of them will have eight wave objects inside and they will have different shift values so that they're not on top of each other and they will have beautiful colors. So let's do that. So let's copy and paste these two and then change the name here. Each of them will have eight, right? And I want the first one to start at zero, so no shift. The other one will be 90, and then the third one will be, let's do 30. And then as for the color, so the color values just magically appeared here. All right, and we also need to call the display function for all of these waves. All right, let's try this. That's cool. OK, the last piece is that we need to change the background color from this light gray. All right. So this is really cool already. To make it even cooler, you can add a new variable, the transparency or the alpha value. I'm going to set it to 30. So all right. So it gives this blurring effect, which makes it more optical illusion-y. But as you can see, when I click play, you saw that shifting in color, right? So to fix that, basically, you just need to add the background again here so that it starts with this color. All right, let's try that. All right, that is really cool. This amazing piece of animation is based on a very basic concept of oscillation. So as you can see here, you can create so much just knowing of very fundamental concepts. Play around with these functions and see what you can come up with. Give it a try.